what is ATP? A lot of people have asked me, what is ATP? ATP is a high energy nucleotide that provides the energy for all living processes. For some reason, living things developed or use this chemical as the gasoline that powers all the chemical reactions in a living cell. It's called ATP. <clears throat> How is ATP produced? Where does the cell get ATP from? Uh, you don't get it in your food directly. ATP must be produced within a cell through a process called cellular respiration. In order for a cell to produce ATP, it uses ADP. What is ADP? Adenosine diphosphate. It has two phosphates. By attaching a third phosphate onto adenosine diphosphate, a high energy nucleotide, a high energy chem chemical is formed called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So imagine adenosine diphosphate attaching a third phosphate forms this high energy nucleotide called adenosine triphosphate. But in order to attach this third phosphate on ATP to create this high energy compound, you need energy. Energy is needed to attach that phosphate onto ADP and form ATP. So where does this energy come from to attach a third phosphate on ADP and create this fuel for living cells? This energy comes from a process called cellular respiration. In cellular respiration, so this energy comes from cellular respiration. What is cellular respiration? Cellular respiration. is the process by which sugars and other foods are broken apart with oxygen into carbon dioxide and water in order to release energy. And that energy is then used to join these phosphates onto ADP and form these high energy nucleotides called ATP. Now, over the years, students asked me, they said, I don't understand this whole process. If sugars contain energy, why do you have to break apart sugars to release energy in order to make this high energy chemical called ATP? It sounds like all teachers are saying is you've got sugars, they contain energy, and you have to take the energy and sugars and turn it into a chemical called ATP, which contains energy. What's the whole purpose of this? A number of years ago, I came across the following analogy, and I think this will help. If you've ever gone to a laundromat, you'll notice that if you wanted to wash and dry your clothes, all the washing machines and dryers only take quarters. You have to have quarters in order to wash and dry your clothes. What if you had a $10 bill? If you have a $10 bill, you have to go to a change machine in the laundromat, you stick the $10 bill in, and out comes 40 quarters. Now you can wash and dry your clothes using, using the washing machine and dryers at the laundromat. What's the point of this anal analogy? Think of a sugar molecule like a $10 bill. And think of the uh, ATPs like quarters. In order to power all the biochemical reactions in living things, they only use quarters. Well, they only use ATP molecules, but it's like quarters. And so, Foods like sugars and fats and proteins, think of them like $10 bills, $20 bills, $100 bills. And the purpose of cellular respiration is to basically do exactly what a change machine does, to take the energy, the value that's in a sugar molecule, and to convert that into quarters, into ATP molecules. So this is a, brings up an important thing to keep in mind. All the books always talk about ATP as a high energy nucleotide. But if I were to ask you which contains more energy, which contains more energy, and one ATP molecule or one sugar molecule? The answer is the sugar molecule contains much more energy. Again, a sugar molecule is like comparing a $10 bill 
to a quarter, and a quarter is like an ATP molecule. But this process is needed, just like you need quarters to run the washer and dryer at the laundromat, you need ATPs in order to provide the energy for all the biochemical reactions occurring in living things, including muscle contraction, the generation of electrical impulses in the nervous system, cell growth and cell division. The fuel for all these processes it requires ATP. Now, let's take a look at cellular respiration, therefore, and understand the overall process of how this energy that's in the sugar molecules is released in order to make ATP. So, glucose, which is one of the most common of the organic compounds that are broken apart to release energy in order to make ATP, contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. It's going to be broken apart as the covalent chemical bonds are split as the covalent chemical bonds are broken apart in the sugar molecule, that releases energy. The sugar molecule is going to be first split in half. Then each of those halves are going to be split apart. And eventually, that sugar molecule would have, will have been broken apart into six individual low-energy carbon dioxide molecules. Those are the carbon dioxides that are exhaled or released by living cells as they break apart the sugars to release energy. Now, that energy, and we'll come back to that energy in just a moment. Why do living things need oxygen? What's the role of oxygen? Why are you breathing oxygen? As the sugar is broken apart to release energy in order to make ATP, the question comes up, what do you do with the hydrogen atoms that are being released? Cells cannot simply release these hydrogens into the cell because that would increase the acidity of the cell and kill the cell. So, what living things do is they take in oxygen and those hydrogen atoms that are being released from breaking apart the sugar molecule are then transferred to the oxygen atoms. A very important coenzyme involved in the transfer of these hydrogen atoms onto oxygen is a coenzyme called NAD. <clears throat> now, technically NAD stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, but everybody calls it NAD. And it transfers hydrogen atoms two at a time. It transfers hydrogen atoms and electrons two at a time from the sugar molecule ultimately to oxygen. And of course, if you transfer hydrogen atoms on oxygen atoms, what do you end up with? That's right, you end up with H2O with water. So there is a name for this process of transferring hydrogen atoms and electrons from one molecule to another molecule. These types of chemical reactions are called oxidation reduction chemical reactions. Whenever a molecule loses hydrogen atoms and electrons, we say that it has become oxidized. So we would say that glucose since hydrogen atoms are being removed from this sugar molecule, we would say glucose is oxidized. It is oxidized into carbon dioxide. 